Good morning, Code Bakers. We are using Flutter and Flame to build mobile app games. The hero of our story, George, has moved into a new city, Happy Bay Village. He's trying to make friends. When he makes a friend, the friend counter in the lower left-hand panel will increase by one. At this stage in the game, George, all he has to do is intersect or collide with one of the neighbors. There's only two neighbors on the screen right now, and he will get the score. In the future, we'll have Mean Girls enter the scene, and George will have to compete against the Mean Girls to get to the neighbor first. However, at this stage, we're just going to make it a little bit more challenging by introducing baked goods onto the scene. Baked goods are objects like apple pie, cookies, and other types of things you'd bake in a kitchen. You bake the objects in the kitchen and you give it to your neighbor. We're just gonna have the objects lying around the screen. The number one code baker introduced me to ghostpixels.itch.io where they have free pixel foods. So we're gonna use this. Enough assets here to throw a large house party. However, at this point in the game, we will, we will focus on the baked goods. So basically pastries, cookies. If you are feeling generous, you could donate a, a dollar or two to Ghost Pixels. However, we'll show you just press the no thanks right now that, you know, you could go back and donate if you wanted to, if you liked this guy's uh, assets. These are 32 by 32 pixel tiles. We're going to drop them into the assets slash images folder of our project. If you only use maybe let's say four of the tiles, we can just use them as individual files. Uh, as, if you get more tiles, you should probably drop into a tile sheet with something, for example, like texture packer. Let's see if we can just use it as individual tiles so that it, may, it will make our game easier. I selected four, apple pie, cheesecake, choco cake, and cookies. Okay, so let's switch over to Tiled. This is a free application. It was covered earlier in uh, different videos. The main focus of this section is to understand how Tiled works with uh, objects. So we're gonna make the objects collidable within inside of Flame. We've already made the friends uh, collidable by putting a bounding box around the friends as an object. We're now going to add baked goods, but because we want the baked goods to be, uh, we want it to disappear in this case when George picks up, for example, a piece of apple pie, uh, we're not going to actually glue the image to the map. Select new, then object layer and then call the new layer baked goods. Make sure it looks pink, like in the example. Select the draw rectangle tool at the top of the toolbar. It's this blue square. Then use your mouse to draw a 32 by 32 pixel square you can have it be rough and then in the left panel you can put the precise pixel count so that it's 32 by 32. at this stage we're just trying to learn how to use tiled and you could just use it right now you could so you could get the collision working right now with just this level however we're gonna put a type identifier. Uh, this is probably not necessary for some games. You could structure it differently, but we're gonna extract the type in the flame game. And that's how we're gonna differentiate between the different baked goods in this technique. With the apple pie box still selected, press Control D. Control D duplicates. It does not uh, erase it. And once you duplicate it, you can then move the layer you just duplicated or the apple pie you just duplicated um, to get the same size. And then we can start dropping down additional baked goods around our map. So every time I drop it, I'm using Control D to duplicate it. 
Um, this would also be more useful if we <laughs> embedded the an image uh, in here for uh, to, just to make the visual map. But right now, I'm going to change the type to uh, from apple pie to uh, maybe cookie, or we'll we'll have some different pastries around here. You can't see the difference right now when we're building the map, but we're we're, we're going to set it up. We have a chocolate cake and getting pretty hungry. So maybe I'll make this video a bit shorter so I can go in the kitchen and grab some food. We're not actually going to use the images from the tile map. We're, we're going to pull it from our image assets slash images directory within the flame game. All we're using is a bounding boxes, but this does make it easier for you to build the map or at least customize it at this stage. So we have four baked goods, make four boxes and then change the type. In VS Code, you'll notice that at the bottom of the, the tiles file, map.tml, there are four objects. And these are the only four lines that we need. So this next set of steps is actually optional because we're going to put the image into the bounding box. Just for this visual representation, we're, we're only doing this to build the map. We don't need this data, and actually, we're not going to use it uh, for the map in, in Flame. Create a new tile set, and then browse for the image, which is in your Flame game. It's the George game that we're building. It's in the assets slash images. Again, you don't need this step to actually build the game. This is to practice using tiled and for you to understand the relationship of the bounding boxes to the graphics on the screen. So now we have a single uh, tile for the tile set. We're going to select the insert image onto the map and then place the apple pie over the bounding box. So this stage is only for your education or understanding of tiled. You don't need both the bounding box and the image. But let's repeat the process because, you know, we just have four of these baked goods and it's kind of fun to put the baked goods on here. And then I'll explain why we're duplicating it. Um, so this is just for you to see uh, what you're putting on the map. And, you know, it's, it's more fun than constantly thinking, oh, what was that bounding box? Yeah, in the future, we can probably just place the baked goods on the map itself and then do some correction within flame game for the Y coordinate. But let's review the process. So another technique here is if you drag and drop the image onto the tile set, this new tile set dialog box will appear. And what I'm doing is I'm going into my uh, windows, uh, the bottom taskbar, and I'm clicking on tiled. And then that's how I'm able to see this dialog box for some reason, the dialog box is hidden. All right, so we just got a few more of these baked goods, these beautiful free pixel food icons from Ghost Pixels on itch.io. Let's add the choco cake on there. Man, it's looking good. I am going to have to stop the video and break into two parts so that I can... Uh, go downstairs and eat some cookies, maybe. The tile map itself is from Lime Zoo on itch.io. George is from User Sheep on Open Game Art. With our Choco Kig on there, let's go back to VS Code and open up the map.tmx file that we're working on. Notice that Although we only placed eight baked or uh, four baked goods on here, there are eight uh, entries. We're only using entries three, four, five, seven. Notice that 
uh, the entries 8, 9, 10 have a different Y coordinate uh, than the original bounding box. This thing is about roughly 32 pixels. It's based on the precision at which we placed the overlay. However, it, it is interesting that the if we only dropped the image in, which we'll probably do in the future, uh, we'd have to adjust the Y coordinate down by 32 pixels because it's using the bottom of the image as the anchor point when it when you place it on the map. I'm going to post on the tiled forum to see if there's an easier solution to make the anchor point of the inserted image in the object layer um, on the top left hand corner to make it more uh, easily match with flame. In the next video, we'll get these baked goods to appear inside of the, our mobile app game. And hopefully we'll be able to get to the point where George can pick it up. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.